Yo, what's up, family? Second part on speaking about having haughty eyes. First, let it be known that God hates. He hates sin and he hates sinners. And we ought not to shy away from the truth for it really is only out of the reality that the gospel explodes with such wonderful good news. The God that hates sinners also loves sinners and sent his only son to die and to take upon himself the hate-filled wrath we so deserve. God is simple, and in the mystery of his infinite being, he sets his love upon an elect multitude who are worthy only of his good hate. And so, when we read in Proverbs 6, 16, that there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are abomination to him, we should take seriously what God, what it means for God to hate family. The wise will take heed to the words, and they will take it to their heart. But the Lord detests our sins. The first thing we are told of, of which God hates haughty eyes. The literal rendering here could read, high eyes are those who lift up their pupils. They don't look at people in the eye to understand or engage them as equals. They basically look past them. They think they're above them. This is describing the kind of person who's filled with pride, who thinks too highly of him or herself and treats others as mere props and extras in their own blockbuster lifetime movie. Life revolves only around them, and every social media platform selfie shows it. The person who has haughty eyes has rebellious, has rebelliously introverted the Lord's commands to love the Lord your God with all your soul and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. In his or her pride, they lift up their nose and their eyes to those around them, looking down on others, and fails to love them or God because he is so consumed with his own interest or her own interest. Their love is of a selfish nature and it only interacts with others insofar as they are useful to his or her desires. And it ends if you can't help them with that. In the book of Proverbs, we're meant to understand two things from this. First, don't be haughty because the Lord will hate you. And it would be also quite foolish. Second, avoid any close fellowship or partnership with those who are haughty because as Proverbs 6.15 puts it, calamity will come upon him suddenly in a moment and he will be broken beyond healing. Wisdom pursues humility and love of others. In this, there is real life and flourishing family. But as Proverbs continues to teach, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Consider Christ, you know, consider Jesus Christ, who according to Proverbs 8 is a defined wisdom incarnate. He says of himself, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. The heart of Christ is not lifted high. There is no haughtiness evidence in his eyes. No, he fully loves his father and his neighbors as himself. So much so that even he is very nature God, he did not consider equal with God, something to be used in his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made, being made in a human likeness and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death and even death on the cross. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, family. Here is a sympathetic high priest who is in every way able to sympathize with our weaknesses, yet without sin, Hebrews 4.15. And so what does that mean for us, family? It means this, we can find forgiveness for our pride and our haughtiness. And we all have done this at some point in life, and some of us come to terms with it and recognize the error in our ways, and we repent and ask for forgiveness. And you can try to warn other people, and some will take heed, and some will listen and feel bad and feel that humility and that conviction, and some will gnash at the teeth and get angry with you and continue to look with haughty eyes, family. Um, with confidence, you know, we can draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need, Hebrews 4.16. It also means we can have this in mind among ourselves, which is ours, Christ Jesus, Philippians 2.5. As Paul commands us, we are able to do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, um, but in humility count others as more significant. Let us let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also in the interest of others. Philippians chapter 2, 3 through 4. 
Family, there's a wonderful self-forgetfulness in Christ where we become more and more concerned with others and less concerned with ourselves. Dear friends, the Lord hates our haughty eyes. He hates we boast in ourselves and we're constantly promoting ourselves. This truth ought to drive us with everyone, you know, on social media platforms to some serious repentance. But oh, how wonderful is God's grace. Because of God's love, he has also punished our foolishness and prideful boasting in Christ. Because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who becomes to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30-31. through 31. We are only to boast in the Lord. You're not to boast in yourself, your career, how you look, the color of your hair, whether you got a big butt or not. You, you, you know, you don't boast in the money you make. You don't boast in all the friends. and the, You are only to boast in the Most High. That's it. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 30. Pride and arrogance in the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. Psalms 5, 5. The boastful shall not stand before the eyes. You hate all evildoers. Psalms 11, 5. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Romans 9, 13. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Also, family, family. And Numbers 15, 30. The term haughty is used to describe willful, defiant, high-handed sin. But we know that we can be forgiven for this, and we know that we can turn from this once someone has brought this to our attention. But you will never get anywhere with God having haughty eyes and looking down on others and being full of self-pride, self-promotion, and trying to make excuses for it. You know, like, oh, I grew up this way. You know, this I've always been this way. No, that's not going to cut it when you stand before the throne someday and you stand before the Lord. You know, he's going to ask people about having haughty eyes. So don't let that be you, family. Love you guys. Later.